whatever day. Um, hope you're enjoying our videos. We're going to dive into uh, a, a phrase that we use pretty os oftentimes uh, uh, when we talk about new concrete products. But I'm John. I'm David. And we're here to talk to you about the phrase making concrete stronger and last longer. And we use that. We use that a lot, David. When do you think the last time you used that phrase? Uh, probably this morning. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote uh, another article last night on our blog, and I think I used that in the second paragraph. Yeah. And it's important. True, and, but we've never really gone into that phrase and what it means to us. Yeah, that that's fair. Right. So. What we're going to do is break that down today, give you a, a little bit of background into where we see that phrase fitting into getting new and emerging technologies onto the job site, um, and I think it's warranted. Oh yeah, I think so. We use it a lot. We need to carefully define it. Carefully define it. And that's what, as engineers, you know, sometimes you'll find a lot of our videos, we're very technical. I mean, and... We have our own language. We do, and sometimes, sometimes we can either use the wrong words accidentally or say things out of turn. So if you pick up something where we screwed up, please let us know. We don't think that there's anything wrong that can be identified in this, but if you have any arguments on it, we'd love to hear them. Sure. So let's dive into it. Making concrete stronger and last longer. And I would, be, I would dare to say that the two are not mutually exclusive. Yeah. They're connected. They're connected. When we say we want to make concrete stronger. Stronger, well we've talked about strength a lot. Strength is P over A. It's the stress at which the uh, concrete fails. So if it's stronger, it fails at higher stress. If it fails at higher stress, it'll take more load. It's uh, in many cases safer. Right. If it's stronger, if you're looking at a building, stronger is probably better. So yes, stronger in general is better. It takes more stress, carries more load. Now, the strength term that David is talking about, the P over A, is our compressive strength of concrete. Right. If you've been in the concrete industry for any amount of time, I've grown up in the concrete industry since I had a full head of hair. That was a while. Wow. Since I was about 14 years old, and the one thing that I remember besides slump and air, compressive strength. Yeah, no doubt. Slump and air are fresh properties. Right. But yeah, the uh, design, the industry, resolves mostly Hangs their hat. Around strength. Now, that strength is actually used to determine other properties about concrete, but that's a topic for another conversation. It can be used to estimate other properties. Right. <laughs> sure. Now, one thing that we find is, no matter the technology that we're bringing out to the field, and despite the fact people say, well, we don't really care about strength, the number one thing <laughs> that people want to see, especially in new technology, you're making greater strength than the reference. True. No matter if it's supposed to or not, and quite frankly, when it comes to compressive strength, increasing the compressive strength of concrete is not a very difficult thing to do. No, you throw money in any way. Throw <laughs> money at it if you want earlier strengths accelerators, if you want later better strengths, you can use hydration stabilizers. If you just want more strength, you can you know, increase the amount of total cementitious, reduce the water content. Like David said, it depends on how much money you want to throw at the mix and how much time you want to invest in playing with the constituents in your overall concrete composite. That being said, while it's not difficult to get more strength, it is difficult to get that balance of strength and durability. There's the kicker. Making the concrete stronger and, and last longer. When we say last longer, what do we mean? Well, we mean just what it says. We're talking about life cycle. We're talking about the concrete lasting longer, being in service longer, um, you know, surviving longer, doing its job longer. I mean, it's got a job to do. We need it to do it as long as possible. Now, we're going to exclude the conversation of municipalities allowing a concrete structure to degrade past its intended service life, not lasting longer because of that. Yeah. Let's ignore that for a second. We'll ignore that. There was a, a, a bridge collapse recently where I think it could definitely be argued that the bridge was so out of service that it should have been replaced. Yeah. That's a more complicated topic. We'll, we'll set that aside. There's service life which has a repair cycle and service life which has a 
a longevity cycle. We'll, we'll talk about that another time. Right. Now, what we are talking about today is using new technologies that do increase the strength but don't inhibit the service life or create an environment where the concrete is susceptible to chemical or physical attack. That's right. And let's say, for instance, and I'm not bashing this uh, chemical, if we look at a, a, a chloride-based accelerator. Right. Amazing product if you need early strength. No doubt. Four hour to 24 hours, skyrocket in flight, you can take that strength from nothing to rolling over it in four hours with calcium chloride-based accelerators. Yep, good for pavement repair, especially if you have liquidation damages uh, for, to let traffic on, those kinds of things. That being said, chloride-based accelerators create an environment that could give you premature steel corrosion and premature concrete failure. Yep, no doubt. Now, within the last decade or so, maybe a little bit more, there have been higher or more stringent limitations on the amount of chlorides that are in concrete. So, calcium chloride is, I don't want to say a thing of the past because there are still municipalities that use it on the East Coast for accelerating strengths. That being said, you're making your concrete stronger, but you're not setting up the environment to make it last longer. That's right. Now, I would suggest, I mean, what our job is to make that concrete stronger and last longer, and a replacement for that non or for that chloride-based accelerator is either a non-chloride-based accelerator, ASTMC 494, I believe, type S, and then the ASTMC 1182, you're the scholar. Okay, well that, that corrosion one, all uh, were, were designed and I guess and or used, maybe is a better way of saying it, to identify something that can not only be used as an accelerator, but something that could be used as a corrosion inhibitor. Right. So that is a technology that was brought to the industry 20 years ago? Yeah, probably in that range. Right. So, you know, it's a recipe question. I mean, some people like sweet chocolate, some people like bitter chocolate. I mean, you know, some people like early strength, some people like later strength. I mean, well, for early strength, if we're gonna if we're gonna just focus on early strength for a second, one of the things that we did was bring colloidal silica to the market. And one of the uses of colloidal silica, which is not a very popular use for it, but it's also to or it's to help accelerate strength. Yeah, we've certainly seen that. I mean, you know, let's not just wave our hands and throw out words. I mean, we've. We've done a lot of testing to show that, and I think that's part of this conversation we need to bring in is, you know, we need proof for, for, these, for these things that we're talking about. There's an article that we got published in Concrete International that talks about a job site here in Colorado where colloidal silica was used as part of a mix design to get that 24-hour strength that was needed to roll traffic over a certain part of a, a, a runway system up in of the mountains. Right. I mean, and that shows you the evidence, the strengths, the dosages, what concrete mixes were used throughout the tenure of it. Um, but again, the impetus of that was to replace concrete that had been deteriorating within months and to extend it to a service life of years. That's right. So we got early strength. Right. We wanted that. But what else did we get? We got long term durability. So, you know, in the balance, we got both, which is what we wanted. We just went back and did a six-year review on that. You remember that? I remember that well. I saw those pictures. Yeah, well, maybe Patchouli can throw some pictures in here where we went back six years later to compare the colloidal silica that got that rapid strength to the reference, and you saw what? Man, I saw brush marks like the day it was made. And folks, we're not talking about a basement floor here. We're talking about de-icing salts. We're talking about heavy traffic. We're talking about snow scrapers. You sounded so QVC at this. And you can get it now for 10% off if you call within the next five minutes. No, but David's right. And then the reference, the reference looked like a terrazzo, you know, slab. And maybe that's an over-exaggeration, but you had exposed aggregate. Yeah. You had cement breaking off. I mean, you can see where the tires we're rolling. Yeah, no doubt. And don't believe us. Look at the picture. Pa! <laughs> Gotta put the picture in. Yeah. Shazam! <laughs> no, but check out the pictures. You know, ask us questions. You know, push the envelope on what is to understand from this this awesome paper and this awesome project where we proved out a technology. One of the things that a lot of stubborn engineers, brilliant and stubborn engineers ask when it comes to a new technology 
hey, we could talk to our blue in the face about stronger and lasting longer. But the biggest thing is proof in the pudding. No doubt. So what happens in 10 years if this stuff doesn't work? Well, we've got six year data. We got six <laughs> And you know, it's a very frustrating question um, because that really is just throws pie in the face of the stronger and lasting longer. Yeah. You know, it's rare that a salesperson comes to you with a product that is going to make your concrete worse. And it seems oftentimes when we say that phrase, we're trying to put the stronger and lasting longer based on new technology on a pedestal. You know, we're not going to talk about why we have an ASCE bridge grade of a D plus. Yeah. We have a $48 billion a year industry. 600,000 concrete bridges in our national infrastructure. A lot of bridges. $8.3 billion is put back into that infrastructure to deal with the maintenance associated with chemical and physical attack. Right. We're not doing it right. There are better things that we can do to make that concrete stronger and last longer. Well, yeah, to be fair, back in the last century when I was working on bridges, um, you know, back in the 70s, we did the best we had, you know, 40-some 40, 40 years ago, that was probably the best we have. That is the best we have now. We have better now. And that's my point. Exactly. And I agree with your point. That being said, we're using yesterday's technologies to solve today's problems. And tomorrow's problems. People ask us about concrete 2030. That, that's just a blink of an eye. Let's talk about 2050 or 2060. Let, let's talk about concrete 2030 because so, for some reason people think 2030 is going to be this huge expansion of, of new technologies throughout all sectors. The reality is our concrete 2030 is going to be paying for concrete 2015. That's right. 2010 or 2000. That's right. We won't have enough money to make fiber optic bridges. That would be so awesome. That would be awesome. Control the lights from one part and just as the draw as the, the car drives past the bridge, the whole thing just lights up. No, another another topic. Another topic. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> tangent. Another topic. So, you know, the reason why we say making concrete stronger and last longer, we almost want it to be political propaganda, where we repeat it over and over and over and over again until it becomes an accepted concept in our industry because we are trying to educate you the industry and if there's a better way that we can do it you know I think the most important question we can have from you is how do we make concrete stronger and last longer and we have a responsibility as engineers and as people that build all this infrastructure, we have a responsibility to do that. I mean, that's our job, is to get out there and do that. So, I guess to close it off today, how can we help you to make concrete stronger and last longer? To save the world. With all the concrete in it. Go concrete. Beat asphalt. <laughs>